Pisces and welcome to your September 2022 reading. Um, I just, before I get started, I want you to know that the, what happened was, is I actually did your video, but I accidentally read Capricorn's astrology. So um, I had to, I have to cut that out and I'm going to re-put this up. And so when I get to the actual reading, which was on point, by the way, the energy reading was on point. I'm not really an astrologer. So I have to go research this stuff before I actually bring it to you because I do really think it's important though for you to understand because there's just a lot of planetary movement going on. So with that being said, uh, I was looking at the wrong one of my notes before when I put this up. So what you're gonna see at the end of this video is I'm going to cut it and then I'm just gonna have a picture and you're not gonna be able to see the movement behind it, but you'll be able to hear it. So the sound will be there because the reading is awesome, but I don't put the cards up anyway this time. Uh, and that's because I'm just trying to read it as quickly as I can and get information out as quickly as I can. Uh, so I got a little bit of a setback because I ruined six, six of the videos. And so that's why we're really into September now before I'm actually doing any of this. But the Mercury retrograde doesn't really um, become very, very strong until the... Let me get back to my notes because there's so much. Uh, so let's see, Mercury retrograde September 10th. And then the, the strong period ends October 1st. And then we go back into the shadow period, the 17th. So we're in the shadow period. And as you can see, it's already messing with you. It's already messing with people. It already messed with me with my videos. <laughs> so the whole time I'm recording too, I got to keep making sure it's recording because that'll happen too, where you'll see readers will have to do their, their recordings over and over during the retrograde because technology is kind of an issue. Um, and so I am redoing this reading for you, but it's only the astrology part because that part uh, need just needs to be redone, but the rest of it is actually a great reading. Okay. And it was spot on and it felt right. Uh, but <laughs> it's so crazy. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about what is happening before I do that though. We're looking into the sun, moon and rising signs of the Pisces collective. The sun sign is how these energies are like what perception you're going to be looking at the world through the world view is the sun sign the moon yeah the moon sign is how you're going to feel about what's going on so if you're looking at your moon sign i want you to to um think of this about how you're going to feel through the month and if this is your rising sign this is how it's going to play out for you okay so uh this is a general reading and will not resonate with every single person just remember the energies are can be reversed uh and cross watchers remember that these energies are interchangeable uh and so just take the things that resonate with you and the things that don't just leave them behind because it's for someone else um and at the end of this video we will have some suggested videos that you can continue watching if you need more information and every time I do all signs readings, make sure that you're watching those as well, because all signs reading is the energy we share together, all of us. And if you like this reading or entertain in some way, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If this does not resonate with you, it's easier for me to do a personal reading. So you can go in the description box down below. You can click on my website there and set up a personal reading with me. And um, that will be... Uh, very, very beneficial if, if none of these readings are resonate with you or you want more information or something like that. So let's go over the planetary movement and what's going on. So we have Mercury in retrograde. Let's start there. Well, Pisces, you are a very loving sign, a compassionate sign, a forgiving sign. And sometimes we confuse, uh, it confuses and softens the resolve. This is a Mercury retrograde of resolution and resolve. I've seen that happen in several places uh, in my own life, and I keep hearing the word resolve in everybody's readings. There's some things that are going on with this retrograde that's using all the other planetary stuff to work with the resolutions of the things that did not resolve in the past. And one of the things I've been struggling with, and bring, Mercury will bring up other things that you've dealt with in other Mercuries, like I got COVID in one of the Mercury retrogrades, and I was very tired because of COVID after that um, for, for weeks. And so during this retrograde, I've been unusually tired. And it's like, okay. <laughs> and it may be because I've been taking my kid to this jumping place like every day because he wants to go and he loves it. And I'm like, okay. So I go with him all the time and I jump with him for like an hour. That could be why I'm tired. <laughs> but <laughs> it's for a good cause, you know. He's a good boy. All right, so that's you, Pisces. Let's talk about Mercury. First of all, Mercury is going to be in retrograde from September 10th. I mean, in the actual retrograde. We're in the shadow period right now until October 1st. 
Mercury is the planet of how we think, communicate, write, talk, and travel. So technology is a problem. That's why I'm having so many issues with technology right now. It's okay. I'm going to make it through it because I know what's happening. And I was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday and she said, you know, she's like, it's, it's the, the cool thing about all of these readings and, and, and the information that I share with you guys is so that you know. You know, it's so that it doesn't become a blindsided issue where all of a sudden you feel like you got slapped in the face because she said like one day her husband just came home and he was off his rocker emotionally and she was like, what in the heck is going on? And then I had given her a, me a text message just saying, hey, the retrograde's coming. She's like, oh no, she's all, that's why. She's like, because we've been doing so good for so long and now we're on rocky terrain and it's like, what What happened? Where did the, where did the, the switch flip, you know? And she's like, oh, and so she doesn't get as angry with her partner, you know, and uh, she she kind of she, she's not happy about it. She's not happy about the way he's responding and acting, but she's she's able to be smart about it, you know, and so, you know, OK, so I'm just not going to get involved because we're going to talk about Mars in a second. Why you don't want to get involved. OK, so uh, Mercury is in the, the house. I mean, I'm sorry, in the sign of Libra, which is a very diplomatic and gracious energy. It seeks harmony and balance in relationships. OK, oh, I forgot to tell you, have a pen and paper because there's a lot of information flying around in this video. So make sure you have a pen and paper ready. Come back to this video multiple times throughout the retrograde as you start to get confused and not understanding the energy. Come back to the, the video, take notes and, and just get what you need out of it. All right. All right, and specifically for you, it is in your eighth house. So this is where I got the readings wrong was the houses because I was actually reading for Capricorn. Let me make sure I got it. Eight, third, and fourth. Okay, good. <laughs> so in with the Mercury retrograde, you're going to be working on balancing this transformational area of your life, the, the where you share your resources and uh, intense emotions. And it's all going to be around your purpose, like who you who you are in this world, what you have decided to do, what your soul plan was, what you said you were going to do. Like, so my soul plan or, you know, my soul perception of what I'm supposed to be doing here in the world has grown or I felt like it has changed, but it's more been like transformational and has grown into something different. And I'm still growing into something different. Like I have no idea where I'm going exactly. Um, I do know that I have all these spiritual gifts. And at the same time, I'm getting a business degree on top of that. And it's like, well, how does that fit in? And it was interesting because I was learning that the businesses are needing a more spiritual perspective in order to move into a newer age, a newer place, and to transform. And, and, and so if we're moving out of dark energy we, and we're moving into lighter energy, we need more spiritually minded people who can t tap into their intuition to lead the businesses in a more, um, uh, well, I guess you would say profitable, but profitable for this time period. Profitable so that, you know, they don't have to gravitate to these um the agendas and things that we're starting to see play out. Uh, businesses won't have to do that. They won't have to get a specific ECG score or whatever these things are called that they have to get. And that's why you're seeing these businesses taking these huge stands on these bigger topics that, um, you know, that are being played out right now in, in our existence. So it's like, okay. And I started to see that in some of my studies as well. And I'm giving you this just in case you're trying to figure out what your purpose is. This is what this story is about. But when I was doing some of my uh, my degree work, I, I noticed that one of the first classes I took, they said some of the best business leaders are the most intuitive. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Because they said, so they're trying to help the logical minds get more emotional uh, intelligence. So it's not actually like emotional, like we're going to be sitting at the board meetings crying and stuff about, oh, we can't get these numbers to match. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not going to be like that. It's going to be more like, do I, does this feel like it's the right move for us? Is this going to be good for our company if we take this stance, if we do this thing, if we, if we, if we move in this direction, if we make this purchase, you know, and it's tapping into your intuitive nature. And that's how I did really well on um, leading my team in the last exercise that we did is I actually tapped into my intuitive nature to find out what those answers, like to find out like what we should do in order to, uh, to advance our team because we were the last team and we were doing horrible. And finally I tapped into my intuition and said, 
what what do we need to do to get us at least to second place? You know what I mean? What do we need to do to to move up from last place to second place? And uh, and honing in with that intuition and bringing that into my career field actually made my team one of the top ten percent in the world. In the world. <laughs> And worldwide, right? Because I tapped in and said, okay, how many do... And I asked, you know, specific uh, questions and got specific answers and it popped us, right? If we would have stayed in that simulation one... Simulation, not stimulation. In that simulation one more, a quarter, we probably would have been top after that because I would have continued to ask my guides, what do we do next? How do we, how do we proceed? Okay. So I, I think that's what I'm feeling for you, Pisces, because you're super intuitive. And so now it's like tapping into your intuition as you move through your career field and making sure you're combining the two or combining the two so that, uh, you know, you're getting infinite intelligence that moves the businesses in the most prosperous, um, I'm hearing like, 21st century, 22nd century, whatever, the future of humans that we actually move into a better, more productive place. Okay, that was a long explanation, but so I think that's what's going to be happening with the Mercury is really diving in. Mercury is redo, relive, replan, uh, um, re recoup, uh, resolve, um, relate. Like there's so many, whatever re has in front of it, you're going to read, you're going to be doing it again, okay? The the planet that's right next to yours is, at, or, I'm sorry, that's right, the next that I want to talk about, I'm like all over the place. The planet that's the next that I want to talk about is Uranus, and Uranus is a very powerful planet, and it will be in retrograde from August 24th to January 22nd. It's not the retrograde that I'm, uh, um, I'm concerned about. The retrograde is fine because it does slow everything down. Uh, it's, it's more tempered and it feels like more of an internal transformation. That's perfectly fine. It's when it goes to January 22nd is what I'm, I'm a bit concerned about because when it, it gets that, it's kind of like a slingshot, you know? When, you know, you're pulling it back, it's all like, all fun and games, right? <laughs> like, as you're pulling the slingshot back, but as soon as you get to the point where you're about to release it and that sucker goes, there's no stopping it. It's like, you know? And Uranus in its forward motion, I guess you wanna say, is very rebellious, it's innovative, and it's unpredictable. It's like ripping off a Band-Aid, okay? So um, we're gonna be in changing and resolving the self, and it could be through finances and relationships because to of Taurus, the sign of Taurus, and Taurus is a very grounded, thank God, very grounded sign. Um, and I forgot to tell you that when Mercury moves from Libra, it's gonna be going to Virgo next. So it's in it's in retrograde in Libra, but when it comes out, I think that's when it's gonna be going into Virgo is what I've been um, noticing or hearing in the uh, the research that I've done. Okay, so with that being said, then the next, ne uh, so, so your finances, right? But what I'm nervous about is if whatever you do, I wouldn't say nervous, what I'm, what I'm, um, aware of, there you go. What I'm aware of is that Uranus, when it goes direct on the 22nd, if you didn't deal with whatever was coming up for you during August 24th to January 22nd, expect that to be the Band-Aid that's ripped off. If, if So your Uranus, the way that it works, is if you're in a relationship that you really shouldn't be in, and you know it, and you and your friends talk about how you really shouldn't be in that relationship anymore, it's not healthy for you, it's super toxic, it's not anything that you thought that you would be with, blah, blah, blah. And you don't try to make amends or, or resolve that issue with the person during the Mercury retrograde energy and the Uranus energy as well, that very well could be in a relationship that ends and not by your account. Like it could be like you should have ended it, but you didn't. And now it's it's a painful ending because um, now they cheated on you. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, I should have seen that coming. And, you know, now it's like, and I'm not saying you guys are going to get cheated. I'm just giving an example. It could be your work as well. You should have left this job, but you didn't. And, you know, and then all of a sudden you come in one day and they lay you off. Because it's, it's, no, it's, um, it's no coincidence, in my opinion, that we're heading into a recession, mild recession, whatever, you, whoever you listen to. We're heading into this recession. And during recessions, what generally happens is people get laid off. Because 
Target's making too many products. They're not able to sell it. Walmart's making, you know, they're not, they've slashed their prices, trying to get rid of all this stuff that they just have an overstock of things. Um, and that's kind of like the first signs, you know, the, the housing market is starting to level off. Um, I'm not saying it's going to crash or anything like that. I didn't look into the energy of any of this. I'm just saying from past experiences and listening to financial people, it says that, you know, um, it's, it's leveling off, leveling off. Well, they're already saying that Amazon is laying people off. And so it's, it's very well possible January 22nd that a lot of people are going to get pink slips and then we're going to have higher unemployment again. But, you know, I'm not an astrologist. I'm an energy reader and I'm not reading the energy at this moment. So don't, don't, you know, <laughs> anyway, let's move on. And the other planet that uh, we need to, oh, I'm sorry. And in Uranus, so what do you need to be working on? Your potential to learn something new and your community, your local neighborhood and those types of things. Um, and in that is going to be, there's a change happening here. So you're going to learn something new about someone's transformation. It's upside down because this is, it's, it's not a direct energy for you. It's almost like you're going to learn things by seeing other people transform. You're going to, so like you've done your own internal transformations and that's great. Hallelujah. Yay. And what's happening is there's people around you that are now in their energy of transformation. And then you're going to get to look at them through the window of, uh, of you know, your perception. And then you're going to have an internal transformation based on someone else's transformation. That's, that's awesome. So that's kind of how it works. Um, and you're not dependent like Uranus isn't going to come in and take anything away from you if someone else doesn't change because them not changing also gives you a perception and an internal transformation to see what you need to see. You know, why is this person not changing? Um, what is holding them back? What does that mean to you? You know, those types of things. So make sure you're looking at those when you're talking about your relationships. The last planet I want to talk about is Mars. And Mars is in the sign of Gemini. And Gemini is a very witty, informative, love stimulating conversations and ex exchanges, and but kind of mischievous and it's all about communication as well. So when you have Mars in a sign of communication, you have rumors, you or well, rumors will be during the, the, the retrograde area and I'll tell you where that is, but it's actually gonna be like fiery communication. So I had somebody reach out to me the other day and she was like, hey, did I do something to upset you? And I was like, whoa, where is this coming from? You know what I mean? I was like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, and um, so we just, we had a quick little conversation about what she thought and why she thought that. And then I was able to explain and then everything went well. But um, so Mars, is in Gemini from August 20th to March 25th. That is a really long time for Mars to be in a sign. Um, but the reason why is because it goes retrograde October 3rd through January 12th. This is where there's gonna be a lot of rumors, a lot of secrecies and rumors and things. Slow down fact from fiction, understand what's going on so that you're not uh, getting involved in all of that. This is going to be in your fourth house where it comes to your home and the roots of who you are. Okay, this is your root chakra. We have the red Mars color and the root chakra. So you're going to be, um, ta you're going to be feeling the, uh, I'm sorry. You're going to, depending on what your sign is, your sun, moon, or rising sign, you're going to be, um, uh, working through there you go your uh the how like your home and your what is that other one your roots of who you are your stability so think about a tree and where their roots get planted into the ground are your roots all the way down are you totally in in for the win or are you superficially like we have a lot of trees around here that grow kind of just at the surface and so when this when the wind hits them they blow over real easy like their roots are kind of just surface roots do you have surface roots or are they really really down in there and committed you know you're going to be looking at those things there is um the theme around this situation with mars is actually guilt uh, but it's not actually yours. Somebody did something to you. And so it's going to be the same thing as this. 
you're watching someone else transform through their guilt. You're watching someone else have to, um, like, this experience between you and this person, you were the catalyst, you're the catalyst for their, their guilt. They did something to you, and now they're feeling guilty, and now they're transforming themselves because of this guilt. Like, it can't hold on to this guilt forever. And so that's um, basically that. Okay, so we will get into your reading now. All right, I'm just going to find out what the universe wants to tell us. Okay, so some kind of controlling energy is going to come in with some communication. Ooh. Okay, so we have this, this person who wanted it their way, this authoritative, no, this, I want it this way. I don't care. I don't need you. Uh, you know, I, there's somebody, yeah. So their soul has been telling them for a while, you need to, you need to fix that. that. That wasn't cool. Like, you shouldn't have done that. And uh, there's communication coming. Bam. It came right out. Communication. It's movement. Communication. It's change. They lived in an illusion with toxicity all around them. They, they were very defensive when you came in. And they didn't transform just yet. You were part of that transformation to come into their lives to show them what needed to change. Um, you know, there's that song by the Bleachers. And he says, you know, I didn't... I didn't know I needed to change until I saw you, until I met you. Then I was like, oh my gosh, I need to change. What am I doing? It's like sometimes people just kind of uh, spark that awakening in people, in other people. It's like, yeah, you need to change. Like what you're doing is not working. <laughs> so um, we have, uh, yeah, so somebody, you know, has been, has been very exhausted and uh, they, had, they weren't sure about their motives with you. Well, well let's find out where that, I'm not going to put them up here because... I want all the cards, and uh, these are the easiest and fastest for me to shuffle, and I have the best connection with these cards, so if it doesn't resonate, sorry. Sorry you couldn't see them, but you have what's going on energetically up there that you can look at. Okay, um, I want to know what, where is this going? Okay, they pulled these out. So the person went within, and they really started to hear this intuition that they haven't heard before, um, and so... The indecisions and the confusions, uh, the information overload that they were feeling in their heart as pain, like it was so painful. It was painful for this reunion to come back in, but they know that it's the happiness and that's why they tried to control the situation. They, they, they tried to control it because they thought that what they had was happy until you came along and they were like, oops, maybe not so much. Okay, tell me um, what... What is helping this situation? What is helping and what is the obstacle? And then I want to know, I want to know where this is going, okay? I, I hear the story, I see the story, but I want to know where it's going. Okay. The illusions were the obstacle. They had a little bit of financial troubles, maybe a lot, I don't know. Um, they were, so they became, made them very indecisive. You know, they had to make the decisions that they didn't want to make. They had a lot of priorities. People were expecting a lot of things from them. They were trying to adapt to these, these, these issues and they had a problem with time, man time management to really have the, the time to sit down and think about what you meant to them. Okay. Um, and let's see, the, that is the, that was the obstacle. The strength is that they're not as defensive anymore. And what they thought was long-term and what they thought they were going for, they've changed their mind. They're like, oops, and now they want to offer love. They, they have this feeling of, uh, uh, a happy surprise. Like they even may even want to surprise you. They're dreaming about surprising you. They're dreaming about being surprised by accidentally meeting you or accidentally seeing you. It's like they're fantasizing that one day you guys be walking down the street and they're like, hey, 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 how are you? Oh my gosh, it's been so long. How are you? <laughs> da, 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 da. And then it just starts a relationship. It's like, you know, the, a happenstance is what they're dreaming. They're dreaming about a happen, happen, happenstance. All right, so what, where is this going? Okay, that came out. It's moved. Okay, so we have the... Where is it going? It says the the eight of cups upside down is, um, okay, avoidance, fear of change, and fear of loss. <sighs> Worried about the plans that they made aren't the right plans for them. And they're trying to see the big picture and overcome these challenges. Um, they, uh, they want more abundance. 
and they know that, that that's they want to give this offer. They really want this happy surprise to happen. Like for you guys just to bump into each other, or run into each other, or you know, uh, something like that. Um, because they uh, see seven of pentacles. Uh, they feel like they lacked a long-term vision and they, they're not really where they wanted to be and they have some really bad planning. Um, and uh, there's some hmm, self-doubt, inner critic happening. I think they're going to lay it down and eventually bring you this Ace of Cups. That's what the, the outcome says. Okay, so what else do we need to know that we don't know? We'll pull a, um, a high vibe card to keep us high and also a crystal in a second. Um, interesting. So somebody wants to, somebody really wants to talk to you about something. They want to tell you something. Um, they don't want to tell you that they, they messed up. They messed up. And you were their happiness. You were their satisfaction. You bring them so much satisfaction and so much emotional stability, more than anybody ever has. And they don't, they don't know why they, they, they did this to you. They, they, they don't even get it themselves. Why would I do that? Because of my loss, my grief. You know, they're ready to accept this, to move on, to find peace within themselves. They've already done a lot of inner work. They know you're their happiness. Um, they, uh, they know they've been fickle. They've been moody. They've been uh, caught up in their own fantasies and fighting and they're on their side there's fighting and they just want to move away from this logically come towards you get rid of all this betrayal deception um this you know the strategies that they did and really honing into the higher perspective and higher selves to say you know can can i do this can i take this leap of faith can i just open this conversation can i do this they really want to i, I let's see major arcana let's see if they they will to give me an major arcana tells me that they will if i don't see one because um, they have free will you know what i mean uh, let's see where we're at let's give, give me some kind of an idea of how close this person is to really reaching out to pisces there's lots of hope oh there's lots of hope um okay <laughs> We got the Ace of Swords upside down. They, they do have a lot of inner clarity. They have been re rethinking a lot about the things that they've had clouded judgment about. Um, it does look like they uh, have some really deep wounds, though. Um, they've had some betrayal and some loss. But, man, you are their happiness. And they know it. Like, they know that you are their person. You're my person. You know, you are my, you're my home. I feel home when I'm with you. I feel home when we're together. I feel home when I look at you, when I feel you, when I, I feel like I know you. Uh, the king of wands means uh, they're overcoming their challenges. So I have, the first card that, card that came out was a major arcana of hope. So there you go. The first card that came out, major arcana, the star card, hope. Hope that this love will happen. Okay, um, I do want to see uh, the hidden oracle, the truth, because this, if this is love, this would be nice. If this is love, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. da 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 all right, so um, they're getting financially stable. They said they can't reach out just yet, but they want to. And that you got, we share all the same values. You're my person. They're saying you're my person. I, I save everything that I have of yours. Um, and I'm inspired. They're inspired. They miss being with you. It's beautiful. So uh, this person's definitely on the edge. They're doing everything they can to become financially stable because that was the thing that was holding them back for me to begin with. And I feel like once, they're, once they feel like they're, very finan they're, they're financially stable enough to take care of you or be with you or whatever, or just to have the confidence to speak to you, they're coming forward. And they're working really, really hard to do this. Um, so Pisces, uh, oh, let me give you a high vibration card. And let me give you a... Uh, crystal as well that you can wear to help with this energy through 
the month. But that's beautiful, Pisces. That was really beautiful energy. You do have a major arcana. You do have some love coming your way. Um, whether, you know, at least fill it on the energetic level, know that this person's coming. Um, stay positive. I don't even know this crystal, and I'm not going to have it down below because I don't have time, so you're just going to have to find that one. But A-P-O-P-H-Y-L-L-I-T-E. Uh, Apophyllite. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And let's see how we could stay in a high vibration. So this is love. Do, 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 do. So this is love. So this is... Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. So this is the miracles. Okay, so animals. Animals are always high vibration. They are not concerned with life's details. So hold your cat or dog. Talk to your bird or guinea pig. Learn from them. If you don't have a pet, then borrow a neighbor's pet. There you go. All right, Pisces, if you like this video or entertain us in some way, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell on the screen is a suggested video. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.